Uh, hello, my name is uh, Peter LaPuma. And I'm George Gray. And we'd like to welcome you to Environmental Health in a Sustainable World. Um, one of the uh, nice things about our course is that um, there's um, not a lot of people really know what environmental health is, up front anyway. And so some folks come to the course kind of, well, I have to take this course. It's required of me. And we always have the luxury of having students, uh, especially in the feedbacks and all, to tell us that they were absolutely delighted uh, that they took the course, that they, they didn't realize all that was involved in environmental and occupational health. So what we'd like to do is uh, introduce ourselves and maybe then tell you a little bit about the course. Um, so I'll start off. Um, so my name is Pete LaPuma. I actually uh, retired from the Air Force. I was in the Air Force for 21 years. Uh, my first 10 years, um, I spent mostly in occupational health. So we were worried most of, mostly about um, uh, worker health and safety, uh, making sure that uh, noise and radiation and chemical exposures and things like that, that, that workers were safe in their environment. And we'd do things like recommend respirators or ventilation systems and things like that. Uh, in the last half of my um, uh, career in the Air Force, I, um, I started getting more into environmental sciences. And uh, we started doing things that were sort of traditional back in the 90s, like uh, Superfund sites and uh, air pollution. And um, I started to realize that um, th the things that I kept confronting had a lot to do with energy. A lot of the air pollutants that, that we come across uh, are, are sort of linked to burning fossil fuels. And so I started to get more interested in looking for alternative energy, uh, uh, other uh, maybe more sustainable forms of, of energy. And then came along uh, George Washington University, who saved me. Uh, and, and now I get to uh, uh, teach uh, uh, many students uh, about environmental science. So uh, that's, uh, that's some of my history. And... As I said, I'm George Gray. I'm a professor here in the School of Public Health and Health Services at George Washington University. I'm trained as a toxicologist, but I've spent my career doing research and practice around the area of risk analysis. So I'm interested in how we take scientific information, we process it to understand which risks are real and which ones aren't, we try to understand how big they are, and we think about how to do something about them. And then ultimately, something we'll learn about later in the class, how do we communicate about risks? So I spent my, the first part of my career at the Harvard School of Public Health. I then came here to Washington, D.C. to serve as the assistant administrator for the Office of Research and Development at EPA. The Office of Research and Development is sort of EPA's think tank. It's the scientists and engineers who do research to help the agency be ready for our coming scientific challenges. I then stayed here in Washington, D.C. and was very happy to join the faculty at George Washington University. And since then, I've been teaching in this class for several years with Professor LaPuma. Really enjoy sharing both the, uh, the insights we've learned from our research and from our real life experience with our students. So uh, let's tell you a little bit about the class. Um, one of the ways we like to describe the class is it's really kind of a, uh, an inch deep and a mile wide. Um, the reason I say it that way is because environmental occupational health is a very large umbrella. Uh, we literally have a dozen different topic areas from uh, climate change and energy and water and wastewater and environmental risk assessment and toxicology. And it's, it's hard to get a lot of depth into each one of those areas, but we're gonna give you enough of a flavor to be able to um, have a better sense for things when you confront things in the outside world, you're more well-rounded to be able to uh, synthesize and put things into perspective. Many times environmental and occupational health will, will interact with your, uh, with your background. Um, a lot of, you know, even if you're unrelated right now to environmental health, many things that we do in public health um, are influenced by the environment and hopefully we'll, we'll point that out as the course goes on. You'll have a better feel for the importance of environmental and occupational health as a society, when you're a voter, as a public health professional, and we're gonna give you some tips that are even gonna help you use that information in your daily life. One of the things we often find is that, you know, students when they're, when they're made more aware of environmental issues is you start to notice it more. You start to notice it in the newspaper, in the news, uh, in fact, we like to joke that, you know, we're, we're on the 6 o'clock news almost every night, whether it's a, an oil spill in the Gulf or it's um, uh, climate change or uh, the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, if you're a human being on planet Earth and you eat and you breathe and you drink, you're interacting with your environment every single day. And don't forget about things like food safety, salmonella in food or pharmaceuticals in the water. All of these things require a mix of science and analysis 
and management. And that's the kind of thing we're going to be talking about in this class. So it's important to sort of understand some of the interactions that might go on. Um, everybody wants to know kind of how bad is this and will this stuff hurt me? And so what we try to do in environmental science is try to, try to measure and understand those things and try to put it into some perspective. So hopefully when we open, open the doors and we, we uh, take a look around, uh, it'll influence you to um, uh, see environmental health and in, in the way that it interacts with you every day. We've worked really hard on putting this course together in this format. We've had a lot of fun doing it, and I think you're going to find it a really good way to learn this really interesting topic. Um, probably something that's going to help you out, too, is that because the course is, um, uh, has a lot of information in it, we're going to cover a lot of material, uh, hopefully a lot of it is perspective. It's not necessarily intended for you to have to memorize everything. So in the course syllabus, there's learning objectives, and those learning objectives are going to be critical for you to be able to uh, understand the course, and those are really the areas that we want you to key on. Uh, the hint is that may be information you really want to know for later on, for, for say, testable material. Um, we do that because we know we go through a lot of information, and it can be uh, overwhelming when you first see it. So we don't necessarily intend for you to uh, know everything and have everything memorized. But if it's in the learning objectives, that's a pretty important spot to really cue in on and make sure you, you know and understand. So that's, that's kind of our, our way of compensating for test anxiety we know is, is going to be alive and well. It always is. Uh, but this is kind of our way to, uh, to sort of zoom you in on the important materials. So with that, um, we just hope you uh, really enjoy the material. We hope uh, our enthusiasm uh, for the subject matter uh, comes out in the, uh, in the course. We, we, we both really do enjoy uh, uh, teaching this course, and we hope that enthusiasm rubs off on you.